So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom Tuesday Live. It's Saturday, December the 17th, 2011. I'm here in St. Catharines, Ontario, with a bright sunny day that we had a few snowflakes a few minutes ago. And I have some fellow Canadians here with me this morning to uh, present to you Unplugged.ca. It's the unconference. The, the theme is Disconnect to Connect. And our guests today are Rod Lucier, Ben Hen Hazard and Zoe Brannigan Pipe. And in the chat, I know already we have Andy Forgrave and Kim uh, Gill. If anyone else is coming in, I haven't seen them yet. Just type in the chat room. Hi, I'm here. But that's our topic today. And uh, I'm going to start out with a few poll questions um, that will help us have a few minutes of getting your head around the topic today. And uh, before I do that, I always forget this, and I want to thank Tammy Moore in the chat who's providing closed captioning. So if you know of anyone who's having a he hearing impairment or who English is not the first language and can uh, benefit from uh, Tammy typing as closed captioning, please pass that information on. And then we also have uh, Lori Moffat, who is our backup moderator for whenever Kim, Peggy, or I are not available. And she's doing always a good job, and especially this morning, reminding me what my tasks are and how I'm supposed to do it. So thank you very much, girls, for being with us. And our first poll question, so if you can remember where the um, icon is for voting, it's at the right hand icon. So if you click on that, you're going to get a drop down arrow. And our first question is, have you ever published an ebook? Now, Rod has his hand up. I don't know whether you want to ask me a question, Rod, or you're just working with no, the audience. I'm, I'm just pressing the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. All right. So let's see the results of that question. Kind of fun to get the an idea that, oh, not very many people have ever published an ebook, and then some of you have not figured out how to do that green check or red X, or maybe don't know what it. I can't believe it. I'm I'm going to stop right there. Might not have known the topic, but okay, that's a fun. Let's go to the next one. The next poll question is: Have you ever gone 24 hours without any electrical devices? That's the TV, the radio, the microwave, your cell phone, anything like that. Have you ever gone 24 hours without any electrical devices? And I'm going to go back to maybe when I was seven or eight. Let's see what everybody's saying. There are a few of us that have. 45% have. Again, we have a few from not answering. I think I'm guilty. I'm not one of the people that's answering the, the poll question here. Okay, let's go to our next poll question. It's the last one before we get started. Will you be unplugging over the holidays? So yes, if you are, and no, if you're not. Okay, let's publish those results. Hmm. Most people are not going to unplug. I guess it's the one time we have a chance to go and play with our our own devices and and uh, get to experiment. So, okay, folks, thanks very much. Now let's go back because I'm not going to start with that newbie question just yet. I got to remind you, and this is mostly for the recording, that uh, we had a fantastic spirit in Unplugged.ca, and so it's kind of a new thing here. We're going to be talking about disconnect, connect, and remember again who our guests are: Rod Lucier, Ben Hazard, and Zoe Brannigan Pipe. And there's the link for uh, the website, which is all about uh, the conference. I'm going to post it here, the newbie question. But before I start that, I want to give you a bit of background about uh, Zoe, Ben, and uh, Rod. And we, the three of us, have had a chance to meet each other face to face, and it's an uncommon experience for many of us in the room because we've connected so far uh, virtually. But uh, these three people have um, 
done a great deal in uh, working with Web 2.0 tools, especially in Ontario, and they were the lead for developing this conference. Uh, Zoe is a um, pre-service instructor at Brock University here in St. Catharines, although she's in the Hamilton campus. Uh, Rod is in London as a student success teacher, and Ben is a technology consultant, and I'm having a moment, Ben, you're going to have to add this. I've forgotten which school board. I'm with the Lansing Kent School Board, Lorna, but actually I just got a change of assignments this September, so I'm actually a vice principal now of all things. Well, I didn't pick that up. Congratulations. Thank Sorry, you. I've been a little distant online. I've been a little busy chasing kids around the school. Well, I guess that's pretty important. These these are enhanced experiences that we have. You know, it's not always at the forefront. So that's a, a minimal background. Uh, I am going to turn over the mic. I think Rod's going to start with answering uh, what is an unconference, and I know that Zoe and Ben are going to take the mic back and forth to do the presentation. Um, if you want to add some more about your background or how this came to be, please do that. So thank so you very much. Sorry, Ben. Go ahead. Lorna, I'm going to jump in here first, if that's okay. Uh, about okay. this, what is an unconference question? We've uh, okay, divvied up the different tasks, and okay. I think the thank one you. way that we can uh, chat about this is that the uh, an unconference uh, is really something that's different from a traditional conference. So the kind of traditional learning conference that we might uh, recognize at ISPE or the different uh, things that happen around in different regional areas really change. And in this case, uh, we were uh, uh, what we called our own conference was to get off the grid. So we actually uh, got a, a lot of people together, and our idea was if we got people together and did a summit type activity where we collaboratively wrote an ebook, so we actually published, and that we really tried to capture participant stories on video and focus on why blank mattered. So instead of having people come with actually uh, to hear prepared remarks and slide decks, I think one common theme to these unconferences is the fact that it's untraditional and that we're not actually getting the same, um, uh, the same formal uh, experience and it really engages the participants much more. So we really archived our learning through a collaboratively written ebook and through uh, stories that were captured on video. And Rod's going to jump in about some of the lessons we learned. Yes, yeah, so I'll just share that the the context to this presentation is that as as organizers of this particular event, we we took home a whole lot of lessons. We learned a lot about ourselves, about our colleagues, and about the whole idea of what professional learning is and could be. And and what we did is we've sort of organized those lessons and our learnings from our perspective and they may be very different from what other participants had as their experiences because everyone had their own unique takeaways and hopefully people like Alain who just I see just joined the session will be able to have a, a chance at the end of the presentation to share their perceptions but the context of the presentation is that we're going to share with you 20 of the many 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 things that we learned in running this event. So the uh, the players for for many of the people the excited this excitement the start, story started at the Weston Harbor Castle in Toronto so people met uh, I think there was about 37 of us there's a couple of people in the room today that ended up meeting us there at the Northern Edge but it started with uh, 37 people they some were self-selected some we selected we wanted to try to create as diverse of group as we could uh, with the finances that were available. So, uh, you know, we, we would have liked it to be more diverse, but we were very, very proud of what we had and how many provinces in Canada were represented and positioned. So we had, uh, you know, superintendents for districts, uh, principals, teachers, consultants, parents, you name it. Uh, so we also, uh, so for the, many of the excitement, for the people, the excitement started as they walked into this uh, hotel, and I always think of it as a whole bunch of Oprah moments happening at once where everybody's meeting people for the first time. We've all seen it at conferences. And uh, it was absolutely fascinating uh, to, to see the reactions of that. So uh, the picture you, hear, you see here was at a reception we had, and uh, the anticipation just look at the faces, it was just anticipation. I can't even describe it, but the anticipation we feel before, we don't know what's going to happen. So, Rod? And, 
And so from Toronto, we had to get to the place that, that the summit was going to be hosted. And I'll just let you know that um, shortly, shortly before we hosted our summit, there was an international summit. The G8 and G20 events were taking place in the Toronto region. So people from around the world were all coming together um, at these places where they could connect face to face to do the larger work that these um, political folks do. But we found a place close to my heart and my brother's heart. This is a place called Northern Edge Algonquin that's actually run by my twin brother. And a little bit of information about it for you to know is that it is is easy to be offline there because up until very recently the only um, the only way to communicate was by voice. Uh, there are no phone lines in this location. In fact, you have to use a satellite connection to use the telephone uh, or to connect to any media whatsoever. Uh, word is, and I don't know if it's a good thing, but word is that higher speed internet is coming to that site. Uh, but we had a great opportunity to, at the edge, uh, find our own edges in a, in a variety of ways by unplugging from our networks and connecting with real people. And when, when I first floated this idea out to people, Ben and Zoe were the first people that I talked to about it. But the other people that came on board, including uh, Tom, and you might uh, recognize Alec, and there's Zoe, and myself, and Darren, and Dean Chereski, and Ben, uh, when they heard about this idea about getting away from it all to do some work together, there was a lot of excitement right away from doing it. And it wouldn't have been possible without a whole bunch of people collaborating to make it happen. And the, the irony of the whole thing is that it would never have been possible had we not had access to free electronic tools to allow us to collaborate. So tools like Google Documents or Skype were really the only way that we really organized the meeting. We had very few face-to-face -face opportunities. I think I met with Zoe maybe once or twice and Ben once or twice, but everybody else's connection was sort of virtual with the exception of, I guess, a meeting at the end of January when uh, we brought Darren on board when we met at Educon and we met uh, Tom at a conference in Toronto. But, you know, a whole bunch of people helped to make it possible. Um, and these are really bright people that helped brainstorm how the whole event would take shape. Rod mentioned the edge, and I think many of us started the edge. Many people started the edge from Toronto, and so can you not just imagine spending uh, about four hours on a pri private train uh, from Union Station? We uh, and having an opportunity to chat and talk and develop relationships with people uh, in an environment <laughs> like that. It was it was absolutely incredible. So. Four hours uh, on our way to northern uh, Ontario, if any of you know about uh, know where Algonquin Park is, many small little villages and towns along the way. And uh, it was a huge contrast for so many. So this is a picture that you see here where it says the voyage matters when we got off the train. And it was a huge contrast as we arrived into, uh, into the train station in South River. As you can see, people walking in, walking into the, the train station, wondering what they're getting themselves into, many with their rolly bags. I was pretty proud to have my, my big pack on that day. Uh, <laughs> and here we go where we talk about what another thing that really mattered was recreation. And uh, the question that Peggy had in the chat room was, you know, was there a moment that everyone unplugged? And there was a gradual uh, procession, almost, that we went uh, from Toronto, where everyone had flown into the same spot, to the train that Zoe talked about, to this, which was the kind of last leg that we went into the site. And this, for many people, was the moment that internet connection and cell phone service started to cease to exist. Um, in a traditional conference, we're in sterile rooms. We've got you know the white linen, all those kind of things happening in in rooms that are, have everything perfect and we get shuttled or we, or we stay in the same hotel. In this picture, you can see, I believe that might be, um, I think that's Todd, one of our hosts. I think that might be Heather Dernan, and I think that's Kelly Powers, the three uh, in a row there. Uh, and what uh, participants had the opportunity to do was actually either uh, take a, a small walk to a local recreation area uh, or get a ride right from the train station 
or they could take a bike ride, and it was about 25 kilometers. And so what happened was, because of that, there was a variety of learning um, uh, opportunities and contexts. So it really embraced the whole person, not just uh, maybe the one kind of uh, traditional way that we think of when we think about the perfect conference setting. It allowed us to engage with other parts of ourselves. And on this ride in, uh, uh, Vince, who's a superintendent, and I kind of got to the same pace. And as we're riding, Vince, we had a great conversation about who we were, where we came from, our, and by that I mean like our childhoods even. And and Vince just kind of looked at me at one point as we're riding by this this wonderful lake and these pine trees, and he said to me, Ben, you know what, you know what you guys have done here? You've made it so I'm going to remember this moment where I would never have remembered this moment otherwise. And it wasn't about the fact that I may not have had the most exciting childhood. It was about the fact that he was learning something new in a unique environment. So I can think back to that bike ride, and I can literally pinpoint the type of conversations that I was having in that moment. This also was a way that we were progressing to the edge. And there's a really interesting story that uh, Kelly and Lisa, two of our participants, can talk about where the physical act of getting to the edge kind of brought them to the physical edge, which was a, a nice metaphor for where we were going uh, technology-wise, um, emotionally, and uh, with our learning. And that really leads nicely into the, the fact that risk-taking matters is something that we learned. You know, taking that bike ride in was taking a significant risk to get to a place uh, where we have not been before. And I mean that in every way and in the broad sense of that. Pushing ourselves to the edge and embracing the challenge. So the risk taking, people were able to engage in, and this is a canoeing uh, experience, um, uh, engage in swimming, in different recreation activities, in yoga. And, and I'll just share a personal thing for a moment. I don't want to share with just everyone else. Uh, but uh, I actually participated for the first time ever in yoga. And I will tell you that this was a risk-taking experience, and that risk-taking mattered because it pushed us beyond our comfort zones. So, And as learning, I think that's a really key thing, that as adults we model that need to take risks in our learning and everywhere. And the final thing I'll share with before I turn it back over to one of my other presenters is the a whole thing around personal passion. So in a traditional conference, you know, we have package slide decks, they come. We come to listen to someone's personal passion. In this, we actually created a, a mosaic or tapestry, if you will, of passions that everyone brought. Uh, and here we see, uh, we see Brian. And Brian, uh, his voice, and one thing he brought was a love of music, but not just music, Canadian music. And if you're into Canadian music, you know the tragically hip. And so as we were paddling one night, the first night on the on the on the lake that uh, was adjacent to the property, all of a sudden Brian pulled out his guitar and he started singing some tragically hip music that had been written about this area. So very Canadiana, and a lot of us remember that not because we planned it, but because we allowed the passions of the participants to come out. And there are many different stories of the different things people enjoyed doing, uh, really coming out and building that mosaic or that tapestry. And, and so even though each of us had, you know, these different passions and different connections that we wanted to pursue, we had a common focus. We had a product that we intended to produce over the period of two to three days, and every participant had a key part to play in that production of that product. Um, having everybody build together something that can then be shared later on is a really powerful experience. Uh, ben, I'm sure we'll talk about collaborative publishing in a little bit. But unless you've done that and worked to produce something that becomes better because of everyone's participation and everyone's work on it, um, you don't know the power of that. So the, the focus, the actual intent of us getting there was to publish our ideas uh, as well as all these background ideas of pursuing our passions and connecting with one another and having face-to-face -face discussions. We did have a real reason for being there. And one of the things, besides meeting in circles in the campfire, is we met in circles uh, to start our day and to have large group meetings in this large room. This is a room called the Butterfly Room up at Northern Edge Algonquin. And it hosted, it, it could fit maybe 40 people sitting in a circle. But we met in a circle and 
we met regularly in circles, and there's there's something of a of a message in that. I don't know how many times you enter a classroom where it's very clear that there's one identified front of the classroom, whether it's because there's a board there or because there's a teacher there. In our meetings, any one person could take the lead in talking about something or in sharing something. And there was a message that in the very center of that circle was actually another symbol, which was a gigantic mind map that was made up of organic elements. Let me just give you, you you've, you've, you're familiar with mind maps and how ideas can be symbolized with images. Well, we took this natural environment, and our mind map was made of stones, which were representative of each of the individuals who participated. So Ben carted up a whole lot of stones that people then personalized and put their name on. And they, this was the starting of the foundation of our mind map. And then people had round wooden disks that were cut from a piece of wood. And those were decorated with keywords that were going to be the main big ideas that people were going to think about. So we had these symbols that represented the people, and we had these wooden disks that represented the ideas these people had. And then we used twine and ribbon to connect those ideas to one another. So you could connect a person to a person or an idea to an idea. And this gigantic sort of evolving mind map in the center of that but butterfly room became one of the areas of focus for our meeting. And the parallel was drawn by Kim at, at uh, one of the circle meeting, one of those meetings early on when she suggested that it was very similar to the campfire, where instead of the campfire, that everyone was gathered around in a big circle. This was sort of a fire of a different sort, uh, a, sort of a, a symbolic one that we gathered around. Uh, nutrition matters. <laughs> the, I think some people thought that we, we'd be cooking our meals on a camping stove or hanging our packs uh, being in, in that area, but, but Greg the cook had a very different uh, had something very different for us, and he described each meal to us in detail as as we all gathered in 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 the little kitchen area where we in the dining room area. I remember the first meal on the Friday night, as Greg described um, how he uh, and how he made each item, where we got the local for farms and the markets, even the ale that we drank that night uh, was served at an organic brewery just 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 down the the, the laneway from where that where we were uh, it was it was really uh, there was a lot of passion in it and it was something that we could all resonate with uh, the food meant something and it, I think it for us in order to get something done those few days uh, it was important that we were taking care of our bodies uh, it was it was it was a huge factor for us to be able to work the way that we did throughout that weekend. You're seeing a lot of pictures of us, uh, you know, really, we really did enjoy it, but it was hard work and we needed to be able to take care of our mind and our body and our soul. And uh, meals became a, a very a, a central focal point of what we did. You can see in this picture, looking around the table, um, some of the most progressive, connected educators in Canada, driving forces behind change and pedagogy, but but yet, uh, the meal time was a, a, a chance for people to develop uh, re develop their relationships and talk. And even in this chat right here, you can talk. You keep mentioning things like safety and vulnerability. And for us to be able to truly do what we did that weekend, we had to we had to create a situation or a scenario for these 37 people to feel uh, feel that that next day or during that day they could they could overcome some of the challenges that they had, and we all had many challenges, but if you look at the faces on the people in this in this picture, I, I remember one of the participants describing to me, especially at a meal time, that it was a sisterhood and brotherhood at one point, and I thought it was fascinating because it really just, but none of us really knew each other face to face, but taking turns, clearing the tables, uh, I, I can connect with this in a traditional conference, to be quite honest with you. Because I think about the people and the conversations that I have had uh, at the lunch hour when I do go to conferences, I'm sure many of you know what I'm talking about, where that's when you get some of those best conversations in. And so we wanted to draw on that, and, and it worked. It was, it was an absolutely uh, fantastic uh, moment for, for us to have, as you can see in, in these pictures here. So... This goes into, uh, I, I think Rod has, and both Ben, alluded to the whole idea of circles. That everything was about, we talk about the campfire, we talk about the circles in the uh, butterfly room that you saw in this picture previous, circles around the tables. 
uh, and then at least and this is an example of spending uh, an entire Saturday afternoon uh, we were lucky with the weather uh, talking in circles and there was a variety of small circles going on but the intensity look if you look at the body language and people leaning forward uh, it, it was a, a fabulous experience to um, to share in those situations it, it, I I'm going to just go to the next slide okay Challenges matter. Yeah, the, the, across the bay, right across the shore, it's about 800 kilometers to this tree. And if you know Tom Thompson, a uh, can, famous Canadian artist, he painted in this area regularly. And there's a there's a famous painting he painted called The West Wind. Hi, Dean. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the West Wind, if you ever look that painting up in Wikipedia, you'll see that it describes that it was painted in the South Algonquin Park area. Well, this isn't uh, sort of the actual type of tree that he painted, and it's much younger than the tree he would have painted, but don't tell Wikipedia about that because one of our participants, Julia, uh, wanted so badly to swim to that island. She wanted to know the distance of it. And she, she engaged a whole lot of people in conversation about that tree. And there's now an edit to the Wikipedia article um, that documents Julia's conversation that, that hints that maybe this is the actual tree in the painting by Tom Thompson. Uh, but the reason I mentioned Julia is that when we get back to the work that Ben's going to talk about in a minute, um, some people had to sort of take on challenges there to just paddle around that. Julia wanted to swim out to that tree, but she actually took on a far greater challenge in trying to do an edit to a graphic. She actually wrote an essay, so everyone wrote and contributed uh, to this ebook that we published, but her essay was drawn and had to be edited after getting feedback from our group. So she devoted a couple of hours to that and had to forego this particular challenge that I know she really wanted to do. It leads me to really jump into this whole ebook idea and this whole idea of collaborative authorship that we engaged in that Rod, uh, Rod has into that. Uh, really, this whole thing we, we were looking back at and hindsight makes us interpret it and maybe even share it as if it was perfect, but it wasn't. There were so many rough edges and flaws and things that adapted and moved and things that weren't what we originally had thought they would be. But one thing that we did think of, which is that the process was the product and that the product was the process. So one thing we thought about that kind of was a common focus for us was creating this ebook. And how we would create an ebook in a weekend was that we would have people contribute their ideas in an essay about why something mattered to them in education. So here we've got uh, Chris Harbeck from Manitoba. So he brought in and, and everyone had to make their own thinking visible and bring their writing and share it with their small group. And so you can see here in Chris that whole idea of getting your own thinking out and showing it and how vulnerable that is for everyone as, uh, as individuals and how important that was to make the thinking uh, visible here. But it wasn't that we just stopped at sharing our ideas. And this is the key thing about the risk taking and about the vulnerability. This is, this is my group. We've got Heather Dernan, Danica Barker, and myself. We actually read our pieces to our smaller group and had everyone give us feedback, like real, clear, descriptive, honest feedback. And so here we had an opportunity where we're all making notes based on someone's essay about what we think, about our feedback and what they've said, adding to it. So yes, we use those live scribe pens and that allowed us to keep copies of our feedback digitally and hand people the sticky note that was able to be used to embed in there. So it, this really was a moment where we had to have that comfort built over the breaking of bread, over the conversations on the train. And Alana was in my group and she just in the chat says it took us a long time to get to the essence of what matters to each of us. And that's so true. And it helped to be public about it and have this conversation and get the feedback of what others were perceiving from what we were saying to get to that essence of why blank happens, why something happens and why it matters so much to us. And then the other piece is it wasn't just getting the feedback, it was applying the feedback. And I think it's only fair to share personally here because that is such a personal vulnerable moment. And this is my personal vulnerable moment. Alana who's in the chat is behind me with the uh, bandana on and I've got Lisa and I've got Sherry beside me 
and they are giving me feedback and they are helping me consolidate the feedback into my piece. So normally we go to a conference and it's a safety net. We've already given you the perfect slide deck like we're sharing here today. Uh, but in this one, everybody's fair game. Our ideas are fair game. We're challenging each other, not as a sense to, to take someone down, but as a sense to uncover what brilliance people had. That was really what was happening here. And I can tell you as a person in the middle, we were working on my essay here, I was feeling overwhelmed with trying to understand where's my voice in this? What was I really trying to say? What were they perceiving? Am I still on track with my own voice? I was really struggling here to effectively put the feedback in and be clear. And so I think you can see the perplex, the perplex nature of my expression really gets into the aspect of that this wasn't just a little bit of vulnerability. This was really something that was a lot of vulnerability because these things really did matter to each of us. And I think Zoe's going to share about professional learning matters. Yes, uh, th this is a picture of Heather Dern and, and Clarence, and uh, it's a really interesting story because the story continues to go. And Heather just has told us the story just recently at the RCAC conference in Toronto and how meaningful the relationship between her classroom and Clarence's classroom um, is, uh, afar has, ha has, has been for, for the, her, their students. It's, it's, a, it's a pure example of how this conference or retreat or unconference, whatever you want, to, whatever we want to define it as, has impacted students. And I hope somebody in this chat, maybe Rod, if you could uh, add the, uh, the, the blog that Heather has written, I think both of them have written about their, their classroom collaborations. But for them, this was the first time that they had had a chance to meet face to face. Well, they had in Skype and they have in Twitter and, and all the other networking tools, they had a chance at this retreat to really talk about what they were doing and reflect back at what we were doing. And I as well, and I think Jen is in this, is in this chat, Jen Dayenberg, had a very similar relationship uh, with her and me in Ontario and her in Alberta, being able to communicate um, across uh, you know, thousands of miles and and really knowing each other and, and being able to resonate with one another's pedagogies educationally. And then again, being able to meet face to face and uh, stop for a moment and reflect about what that relationship mattered and how it mattered to us and where we were going to go next. And when I look at the story of Heather and, and Clarence, it just absolutely fascinates me. It, it, uh, and it, it, even though I feel like sometimes Personally, I sh it shouldn't continue to fascinate me because we've been doing it for so long now. It still does because we these technologies, these networks that we unplugged from, have are are, are what was at the heart of all of this. And the tribe, when oh, was this uh, you, Rod? You go ahead, Zoe. So I, I, we'll probably all want to speak about the tribe matters, but you know when I when you look at this picture and you you uh, you think about things uh, things like distributed leadership and collective wisdom, uh, we've talked a lot about circles. We don't see a circle here, but what we do see is a bunch of of people um, with similar. Uh, faces. We you, you don't know who who's in charge. We don't know who is the boss or you know who has the authority here. And it's because of that collective. It was because of the tribe. Uh, it, it's it's. I remember the day. Uh, there's so many pictures taken of how we even got these 37 people on this dock at at that moment. But um, the Brad if, if, or Ben, I, I would like you to speak as well as as to this because I think this was such an integral part, these 37 people and the product that was eventually created. So I'm not sure people in the, in the room, I'm sure people do because we're all techie people, I know of something called Jello Skins, which allows a image to be printed and put on a laptop or an iPod or something like that. Well, this is actually, a, a picture taken just before this one is actually on my MacBook Pro because it reminds me of these people and the power of the collaboration of everyone coming together. I really do like what Zoe said is that I, I, I have a hard time here saying that anyone is the leader. I also have a hard time saying that anyone here isn't the leader because every single person, because the voices were able to be heard and people had a chance to express each of their own ideas, was able to lead in their own way. Uh, so that's, 
I think, a really key thing. I think that's a really key thing to the whole unconference thing is the whole uh, distribution of authority beyond the traditional structure to all the people coming together. And this, the book is these people, but the book is also the connections between these people and the thinking that emerged from those folks. And, and I, I would jump off on that connections to these people because I look, I look these people in the eye every single day. Um, and a lot of people that were there, how, they were given a large photo the last day of this, this particular shot. And I'd like you to imagine looking into the eyes of these people who are staring straight back at you, challenging you to be the best that you can be. Um, I actually have to listen to O Canada a lot of times right near my office, but I hear the, the phrase, stand on guard for thee. Like, and I just think that these people are just willing me and encouraging me on. Um, it's a really powerful image to look at. Um, anyway, I, I wanted to jump from that. Let me take that to this next photo where those networked people, as important as it was to meet face-to-face, -face, plugging in and staying connected through light touches of digital text or light touches of audio text or light touches of photographs, uh, keep these people connected all the time. Um, this is a photo of Alec when the bus got 3G Wi-Fi access on the way out of Algonquin Park on the bus and the race to sort of tweet about the experience and sort of sharing that back and there was this rush and people that were there will I'm sure remember this but there was about a week uh, mid-August when we got back where there was this sense that that's the only conversation I really cared about on Twitter was finding out what these people were really talking and writing about and if you ever have a chance I mean there, it would take quite a long time to do it now but if you search the tag unplugged 11 you'll see blog posts written by many of these participants that will keep you uh, keep you connected to this experience for some time but the key is that that networked plugged in part is a key component not only to the continuing conversation but the whole conversation and event would never have taken place without it and so as we think about how important it is to stay connected and to have people to network with I use this metaphor of, of the paddle and the J-stroke in paddling and those of you from Canada who may have been, been canoeists at some point in time will realize that if you just stroke forward, stroke forward, stroke forward, you, you may not stay online. You sort of find yourself drifting left and right. So there's a stroke where you, you pull the water and as, as you reach the tail end of your stroke, you push with the paddle out to the side and it's that calming push out to the side that redirects you and sort of keeps you online and keeps you straight. And I, I kind of think of the whole unplugged experience that we had as a, a giant push to the side where we paused amidst our, uh, the middle of our summer to reflect on what we were doing and where we were going and to set a path for where we might go in the future. And I think that, well, this slide is what uh, maybe the, the post slide to what, uh, well, actually Wes had asked about earlier. This is what happened after we jumped up in the air. I loved it because as we took a photo of all of the uh, folks who are on the organizing team, we decided not to do just a jump in the air. We decided to jump out. And so as we hit the water and we had that photo, yeah, Rod does have a fantastic expression, as does Dean. Hi, Dean. Uh, the, the truth is we, uh, we all uh, were very much in the metaphor of committed. So I like this because, yes, the organizing team committed, but it was, these weren't the only people that committed. It was about each person committing, and Lorna was there. Lorna, one of our moderators and hosts today, uh, she was there. And I think a key thing that we kept on with everyone was trying to allow people to commit in the, air, in the way and the level in which they were comfortable. Uh, and so as they committed as they were able, then we were able to be all committed, if that makes sense. And one of the commitments that we all had as we went forward was the sharing of our resources to the bigger world. So what we did is we actually created a website, uh, unplugged.ca, uh, and it is right here. It has all the resources from this one actual event. But also, we, we also were committed to not just having this as a one-off event and letting our thinking evaporate. We have mentioned about keeping our thinking visible. And the one thing that we did, I know Kelly Power here is in the, in the chat room right now and is in the participants. She was charged with a task of trying to create a facilitator's guide 
and organize us um, uh, folks to kind of make sure that our thinking didn't just disappear. So we actually don't just have this unplugged website where you can go and see the ebook, you can see the videos, but you also have an opportunity to download the facilitator's guide. And why that's important is because we are opening up the window to say, does anybody else want to run an unplugged event? And Jen Danberg may be here, I think she might be here, and she's running Unplugged Scotland in April. There she is right there. So we're sharing this out and wanting others to go and take this and embrace this idea and this concept of how you can make the product, the process, the process, the product using circles, using collaborative authorship, using unplugging to really deepen understanding. So really one of the key questions we have for everyone here is, here's what we did. Do you want to run your own? We'd love it if you did. And then we are built a platform now where we can help facilitate that and have a central gathering place. And we also have some plans to run an international unplug this summer at Northern Edge Algonquin. And I'll let Rod jump in a little bit on that. And if he doesn't, that's okay. So we're thinking about uh, Rod. Um, uh, I'll jump in and say that all the uh, folks from we're, we're thinking of having an actual another unplugged this summer, and we're going to have more information in the new year where we're actually going to run this again, and not just make it Canadian, although there will be Canadians there, but actually broaden this up to the world. Right, Rod? Yeah, I didn't have my microphone on. I, I did a great explanation, exactly what you just said, <laughs> and I, I'm the only one that heard it. Uh, but yeah, early in the new year, we'll put a, a form in there where people can apply to attend, but there will only be 40 <laughs> there will only be 40 spaces available, and we're hoping to get a more global representation and, and do something on a theme of global connections of some sort. Uh, but details will come live on the site in early January. And Rob, now, why do we only have 40 people? Well, you know what? The, uh, some questions came up uh, early on when we were floating out the idea of running this event. A whole bunch of people said, yeah, we'd like to come. Um, and some people were not happy that we couldn't have more than 40, that it seemed like almost an exclusive event, that you could only have so many people there. How could I possibly attend? But the site is perfectly suited um, for that many people to dine together, to share accommodations together, to arrange for transportation via a bus together, via a train together. It's just It just seemed to be a perfectly sized um, cohort of people that we could arrange nicely sized meeting groups, etc. It just seemed ideal. And there simply is not room for a larger contingent at this particular event. Not to be said that, that you couldn't host an event to be an unplugged event for a larger group, but the site that we're at, you can see that room in the photo, uh, it just fits that many people. Uh, but at this point, I just I, I wonder, Lorna, there was a there was a short video, and I know on the website we we've alluded to the fact that videos are available, but people may not have the idea, having sat in on this presentation, that there were stories that people were called to share. And I'll just give a little bit of background. So each person came with an essay that they wrote. It was polished and included in the ebook e that we published. But along with that piece of writing that they did, they were also tasked with bringing with them a story, a story from their own educational past, either as a teacher or as a student. And that story was one of the ways that the group met one another, and it was used to sort of create bonds within the group. But those stories were recorded, and 25 or 28 of those stories are in these little video vignettes that are on the site. And there's a link to one that Peggy has just put in. Um, it's a two to three minute video. If you have a minute to take a, take a listen to that, I'd encourage you to, to maybe view that to have an idea of the context of what I'm talking about. But these stories are rich professional development in their own right. So those are sort of all what we wanted to share, and I'm not sure where we want to go from here. I'm sure I'd like to hear the voices of some of these people uh, in the background who I know personally and other people who may have questions. So thank you very much, Rod, um, Zoe, and what's your name, Ben? Uh, this is the point where Kim usually takes over with questions and takes the lead on moderating who gets the microphone and so on. So I wonder if she wouldn't mind uh, going ahead and going through that process. And as Peggy said, raise your hand to take the mic. 
absolutely. I didn't see any questions, but if there were that questions that I missed, I'd be happy to address those and ask, or not address those, but ask those of our guests. If you have a question that I uh, missed, please type those in the chat or click on the hand and we'll give you the mic and you can ask those. Or if we have guests that attended the Unplugged session that are in in our session today, we'd be happy to uh, give you the mic as well. Just click on the hand and uh, we'll give you the mic so that you can make a comment as well as to your uh, experience at the Unplug Canada session. Sounds like this was just a fantastic day. Great. Darren, let me give you the mic. Darren? Okay. Um, yes. I, hand yes. I, I struggle for oh, the longest okay. time actually oh, okay. trying to share the unplugged experience um, with other people. I, I found that, uh, I wonder how many people had the same experience, that every time I started talking to someone about it, they said it sounds very kumbaya. Um, so it was, you know, and I kind of wanted to get it. I felt it was a little, I, I, I guess that I felt that that reaction in a way, and I don't think that people I was speaking to were intending to do so, but they kind of trivialized what I felt for me was a very powerful and moving experience. And it took me a really long time to get my head around figuring out a way to describe it. And then at the, um, it was actually Andy, Andy McKeel, finally gave me the, the push to, at an event we held here in Winnipeg, a um, bunch of folks from Unplugged were sharing the experience at a PD session before our provincial uh, PD day in, I think it was October, and I couldn't make it, so Andy asked if I would make a video. And I spent uh, probably a good day and a bit working on that video, and um, that that video I think probably um, was the best way that I came up with kind of describing what the experience was for me. I'm not sure if Kumbaya is good. <laughs> I guess it. I guess it is. Um, I don't know if anyone else has a similar experience, but I'd kind of like to hear kind of how other folks have gotten around to um, sharing the experience in a way that they felt really conveyed the message in a way that resonated with others. That's interesting. Maybe um, that those types of people uh, don't reflect much personally and kind of discounted. What your experience. That's kind of a sad reflection. Sorry to hear that, Darren. Uh, Daryl, we you have the mic. Go ahead and click the talk button in the top left. Can you hear me now? Yes, we sure can. Oh, great. Well, just a couple of words about what that experience meant for me. First of all, I knew almost nobody when I got there. I knew Darren a little bit. I had introduced myself to him at a BLC conference, um, and I uh, knew of Dean and Alec and Rod, uh, and I had been uh, following their blogs and following them on Twitter, but I didn't know more people than that, and so I felt a little bit like an outsider, um, a little bit sort of disconnected, but the experience was transformative for me in a lot of ways because it reconnected me to, um, to myself in the sense that it showed me that I was on the right track and I was doing the right things because sometimes as people who push the envelope, we feel a little bit alone in what it is that we do um, and kind of out there by ourselves uh, at the edge. And here I found a community of people who cared about the same things I did and were doing similar things that I did. And even though I arrived not knowing anybody, I left feeling um, that, that 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 alienation that I had come to the place with was gone and I felt 
connected to a fabulous group of people, and those connections have uh, continued and, and grown, and it's just been um, the most important learning experience for me in, in 2011. Fantastic. I, I, can, I, I can certainly see why you would feel that way. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Daryl. Great. And I don't know how to pronounce the next person's name. Dan Berg. Oh, Dan Berg. If you can hear me? Yes, we sure yeah. can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Jen. That's much easier to say. Um, be great. I'm actually, see, I was a lot like Daryl because I came in as the outsider as the person who doesn't actually live in Canada. Um, but I am Canadian and I taught in Canada for eight years. But I, I live in Scotland now, uh, but I have to go back to Canada in August. They kicked me out of the country. <laughs> but uh, so I was, it was a bit strange coming in with, with this different perspective. And see, and I, I resonate a lot with what Darren's saying is I've tried to bring this back to the UK. And try and explain to people here what Unplugged was. And they just see it as this big outdoorsy thing. And I keep saying that, no, it wasn't about outdoors. It was about connecting and it was about writing and it was about collaborating. Um, and I'm organizing one here and, it, and it's, it's coming together really well. But I'm struggling with people saying, oh, I don't want to come because it's outside. <laughs> and it's funny, on a smaller island like this, we see each other when as technology educators and as like-minded thinkers a lot more often because we live so much closer together. So we get those face-to-face -face interactions much more often. So we're seeing, <laughs> oh, Andy was me giggling in the photos, uh, but, but we're seeing because we see each other. So I'm not sure if people don't see the value of those face-to-face -face collaborations when we do see each other more often. Uh, so trying to convince people here that Unplugged was more about talking than it was about being outside. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, looking forward to uh, sharing some stories from Unplugged Scotland with everybody very soon. Definitely. That sounds just as exciting. And I know just from your comments in the chat, I know it's going to be a great event and very worthwhile for those who attend over in your area. So good luck to you. and and uh, to your attendees. And Alana, let me give you the mic. There you go. Alana, you have the mic. You just click on the talk button in the top left. Hey, everyone. It's Alana. And um, again, I think uh, I just want to echo a little bit about what other people have said so far. We did feel like outsiders. I really like the way that Daryl said we were envelope pushers um, because we are in our own realms and I and I can I know that from reading other people's blogs that was very uh, much true that we were feeling isolated in our leadership um, and I'm a brand new teacher librarian and I think I was the only one at the con at the unplugged conference who was actually in that role um, but that was the other thing that was so unique about Unplugged is that we were all invested in education, but there were so many different representatives there from different um, stakes, stakeholders, really, uh, people who had come to this conference. So just hearing it all over again now, it's amazing how emotional, sentimental I get about that experience. Um, and someone earlier, I think they've left the room now, said, well, was it a retreat or was it a conference? And Honestly, I think it was the best professional development I've ever experienced. And, you know, I've been in education for about 17 years now. Um, it was really unique because we were pushed constantly. That's a great point about it being, is it a retreat or is it a conference? Um, and being pushed out of your comfort zone to experience something new. That's a great point. Very powerful learning. Thank you so much for sharing, Alana. I'm going to go ahead and formally close out the show, but we invite you all to stay on and continue the conversation. We do understand if you have to leave, but we want to be mindful of the one-hour time slot that we um, agreed to. 
um, but we welcome everybody to continue the conversation. And we'll come back to the conversation in just a bit. We want to let you know of the interview series that Steve Hargadon is going to be hosting. And coming up on January 5th, he'll be talking with Scott McLeod. And then the 10th on with Ian Jukes. On the 12th with Mitch Pearlstein. On the 17th with Cheryl Nussbaum Beach. And on January 19th with Henry, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Irene. And you can always find out the specifics on futureofeducation.com of Steve Hargadon's um, interview series. <clears throat> we will not be having a show due to the holidays until January 7th, but we will be having a very special reflection smackdown. And we want to let you know some specifics about that. So I'm going to do some app sharing to let you know how we're going to handle that. And we got this idea or um, from the the librarians at the TO Cafe, the virtual um, cafe. And the way they did that is they had a Google presentation, and people would share their web tools that they wanted to share in their SmackDown by creating a slide in their Google presentation. And they just they were given the link and they would just add their slide to their Google presentation. And if they were um, during the session, they just when it came time to their slide, they were given the mic and then they shared their web tool. So we're going to do something similar. We're going to be giving you a link to a form, and the form is just very short, first name and so forth, name of the tool that you would like to share, the URL of the tool, why, and how you use that tool. And then during the session, we're going to be going through our slides, and when we come to your slide, you're going to when it comes to your slide, you'll have already created your slide, and then you'll just share your slide, and you'll be given the mic. And then we'll go through and through the slides just like we normally do during our session here. So let me go back. So once I get back to the slides, the URL that we've created to start with the form, it's a two-step process, and we're hoping this will kind of simplify things. And um, in case you aren't able to make it to the to the live session, we want to make sure that we share your web tool and we're able to convey what you wanted to convey. So to fill out the form, it's tinyurl.com reflection2011. That takes you to our little form, and then the pr presentation form is cr 20 live slash smackdown slides, and that one will take you, and then you can go ahead and fill out and start creating your slides. Right now, it starts at slide 16, and uh, once you've filled out the form, and then you can start creating your slides that you want to decorate the slides for the SmackDown that's going to be on January the 7th at our regular time on the 7th, which is a Saturday. So this will be another fun time, a SmackDown. We're going to be looking back, um, and we're going to share, because um, web tools come, new web tools come up all the time, and kind of looking back at the year, we hope that you will, did I, oh, okay, um, we hope that you will join us for this very special reflection and fun and just having a great time, we have a great time when we do these smackdowns, just a great time, so we hope that you will join us on January the 7th, which will be our next our next show 
and we will um, be meeting our same time, same room, everything's the same, but you will be our special guest and be and help with the presentation at that time. When you exit today's session, you'll see a survey. Um, when you do so, we hope that you will give us feedback on today's session as well as future topics or future guests that you would like to see in our in our shows. And you can also request a certificate for professional to professional development for today's session. If for some reason the sur survey doesn't open, you can always email us at live at classroom20.com or you watch a recording from our archives and recordings page. You can always email us at live at classroom20.com and request a professional development certificate for any of the recordings that you've watched. We also have an iTunes U channel that you can subscribe to the video collection or you can subscribe to the audio collection and the MP3s and MP4s. This is the URL then if you open click this if you type in this URL it will open up the iTunes U channel directly for you and then you could subscribe to our video channel or the iTunes or the audio collection and it's tinyurl.com slash cr20live iTunes U, and that takes you to automatically into iTunes, and that takes care of it for you. So you can take us with you wherever you go on your MP3, MP4, or iPod, or whatever type of player you have that you'd like to take us with you. And we'd like to extend a very special thanks to our special guests today, Rod, Ben, and Zoe as well as to Steve Hargadon, who's the founder of Classroom 2.0 and Future of Education. And thanks to everybody who participated in today's show, as well as to Blackboard Collaborate and to the Web 2.0 Labs project. So right now we're going to pass it back over to our special guest, and we'll take questions. So if you have questions, you can continue to type them in the chat or raise your hand. And we'll pass it over to Helene. And let me give you the mic. And there you go. You have the mic now. Just click on the talk button in the top left. Helene, you have the mic. You can go ahead and click on the top, the talk button in the top left to turn your mic on. We're not hearing you if you are clicking it. You may want to run Audio Setup Wizard. And then. Great, thank you. It is very inciting. Um, if you wanted to take the mic, you can um, let us know, Helene, and then you can uh, run the audio set at Wizard and we'll give you the mic. If anybody would like to make a comment or ask a question, please let us know. We'll be happy to give you the mic and you can do so. Just click on the on the hand to add, let us know that you'd like to take the mic, or continue to uh, post questions in the chat. And Andy, let me give you the mic. There you go. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Rod, I'm not going to talk about polar bears, but I will just very uh, quickly echo what everybody else has said about unplugged. Uh, really, the most incredible learning experience I've had all year and probably forever. Um, and for me, I, I did know a lot of people going into this. I met probably about 10 of the participants face to face over uh, a few years prior to the Unplugged experience. Um, and many of the participants I had been following virtually, you know, reading their blogs and following them on Twitter. 
but just being able to meet everybody face to face, I really felt like we just developed and strengthened all of those relationships so much. Um, there were so many defining moments for me about Unplugged, things that I can still remember so vividly and clearly. The sharing that has taken place ever since, you know, it seems like every day I'm talking about the Unplugged experience with different groups of people, whether it's a professional learning session with teachers or talking to students about that community building that took place. And I think, you know, the relationships that, that have continued to develop and flourish since leaving Unplugged, um, as Rod indicated, I was actually just up in Churchill recently studying polar bears and doing some really neat stuff through Edmodo. Um, and since coming back, I've been in so many classrooms within my school division and around the province of Manitoba, but being Skyped into classrooms with, you know, Heather Dernan in Ontario, who I met at Unplugged for the first time, and Kim Gill in Ontario, who I met at Unplugged, and, um, you know, these relationships have just grown and continued to um, develop over the last few months. So. I know that that's not going to stop. It's just going to keep on going. So just one of those really life-defining moments, just being there, meeting everybody, and, and working together. Uh, it was like a vacation, but it, it was it was actually really challenging work too, but, but just an incredibly positive experience. So thank you very much to the organizers who are here in the room that were sharing our story. I totally yeah, agree. I, it's can definitely I, amazing. Can I just leave a brief comment because Andy, and a number of other people have helped keep the whole thing alive by um, posting the most amazing photographs at the event, even though we were only there for three days and there were only 37 of us. There are well over a thousand photographs that people deemed good enough to put into the Flickr photo group. And so, you know, these distinct experiences and conversations and face-to-face -face meetings are all kept alive and, and sort of revisiting those photos just reinforces that. So it was, it was through the passions of those people who chose to turn their lens on what was going on and then later share it that helped keep it all alive. So thanks to Andy and everyone for doing that. Is there a public flip link to the Flickr group? Okay. Oh, that's to Kim McGill. Is there a public uh, link to the Flickr group that we could view? Yes, there is a public link. All, all the f a number of the photos actually are showing up on the um, the name too at unplug.ca. But there's the Flickr group. Thanks, Ben. Okay, thank you. And if there's a I question, I saw. Will... Sorry, go ahead. I know people are going to want to see the the pictures and live vicariously through the pictures and that experience. I know there was a question around how do we use LiveScribe uh, pens over the weekend, and I think that what we did is we provided a context for them to be used. Uh, we did give each, uh, to the sponsorship, we were able to give each participant a, a, a book, a journal, as well as a pen to use, and they were, uh, and sticky notes, and they were used to certainly archive and jot down thoughts. Some people actually did pen casts, those sort of things recorded audio, I know I did. Uh, but a formal way that they were used in the feedback process for actually using sticky notes that were able to jot down feedback and thinking about what others were saying and still give them the feedback. So we actually gave them the sticky note, uh, but then on our live scribe pen was a digital recording of what we've done. So it was a way for us to give away but still keep the thinking that we had. That's amazing. I still want one. I haven't given up on trying to get one. Uh, I can't wait to get a hold of one. And Tim, I sent you an email, so if you're at your computer, check your email for me. At least I think I did. I think that's fantastic that they helped sponsor the event, and I think that's just a fantastic tool to support this type of event for reflection and, and the type of learning and, and the conversations and connecting that went on at this event. I think that's that the the LiveScribe pen is just perfect for this type of act, event and the connecting and reflecting that went on. Well, it's actually it's nice you say that, Kim, because it really brought up the conversation that we had as an organizing team, which is. So we're people who think digitally, we want a digital archive, but how do you do that and how do you allow people to have that when you're unplugging? And so that's really where we started coming up with these ideas and how to use them. And Alex? Oh, excuse me, Andy? 
again. Um, just in terms of the LiveScribe pen, I just posted a link to a post from uh, Danica Barker's blog, and Rod earlier alluded to the tree uh, that we thought was maybe one of Tom Thompson's trees from the, the painting The East Wind. Um, there were so many things that happened that afternoon. When we first arrived at the northern edge, um, just the stories that were taking place, the conversations between each other, we were really just kind of breaking the ice and getting to know each other on a different level. Um, and I looked over and I saw Danica just sketching this little picture and she was using her live scribe pen to draw what she was seeing as she sat there. Um, but the conversation that was being recorded around that is amazing. Um, you know, Julia Forsyth going and asking everybody their, their prediction about how far away that tree was. So you hear the voices of so many people and you just really get to pick up the conversation in the actual context of being at the northern edge. So if you get a couple of minutes, you may want to just kind of watch that picture come to life on Danica's blog and just hear some of the stories firsthand. Uh, just one of the incredible opportunities for, for using that live scribe pen while we were there. And that's good to know you can go swimming and it will still work. And Jen. Oh, I forgot to give you the mic. My fault. My fault. There you go, Jen. Oh, all right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, well, I found an interesting use for my live scribe. Um, on the bus on the way home, I found myself sitting beside uh, Tom Fullerton, who uh, works in Montreal and BC, and Brian Jack. And I got talking a little bit about my thesis, and all of a sudden, they started giving me all sorts of ideas. <laughs> and there, this conversation and these notes that I recorded around this has turned into about six pages in my thesis. And I ran into this huge issue of how how do I cite it in APA, a conversation recorded mm. with a live scribe. Um, and we're working it out, but it's it just this, these conversations have taken on new life because of this digital format in other ways. That's a good point. That's something new that... Um APA hasn't addressed yet. Excellent point. Thank you. I just finished mine about a year ago, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about it anymore, but that's a good point. Are there any other questions or comments that you'd like to share with our group? If so, please just type them in the chat continue to do that or click on the hand with the air uh, used to have a green arrow on it doesn't anymore looks like things are kind of winding down this has been a fantastic session and I love the sharing and uh, it seems like this is the group has become such a close-knit group that, um, you know, it, it's from the outside looking in, it's like a, it, it, it's very envious that um, how close knit the group is and how closely tied all of you all are. So we're going to go ahead and let, uh, close out this session today and let everybody enjoy their weekend and thank you for letting us have a peek into your experience as well as into your inner circle into your unplugged group we are so grateful for your time and sharing your experience and your reflections we really appreciate it so everybody have a wonderful Saturday in this weekend as well as the rest of your holiday and New Year's and be with us on January the 7th when we will be talking about our reflection smackdown when we'll be sharing different web tools, our favorite web tools and those are the two URLs that we will be referring to and they will be on our home page at live dot classroom two zero dot com so be watching for those on Twitter and then blog posts um, we'll be posting those throughout the holidays to keep you updated so that you'll be able to participate with us on January the 7th 
and come prepared to share. Come prepared to have a great time. And we will see you over the holidays online. And then see you all decked out on January the 7th. So take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay warm. And have a great time. See you next year.